Over the past years, the Philippines is said to have fairly improved its economy. While this may be a ray of hope for a country known for its laggard economy, this is hardly enough to close the growing gap between the rich and poor. This is also way below the growth rates of our high-performing Asian neighbors. Currently, nearly 3 in 10 Filipinos are poor. Poverty is even more in rural areas. Indeed, inclusive growth still eludes most Filipinos. Inadequate infrastructure that would spur growth and attract investments, such as more roads and bridges, especially in rural areas, is often cited as the culprit. It is easy to understand why. Infrastructure links people, creates markets, generates jobs, and brings a community back on its feet in times of disaster. It is an economy's lifeline. Over two decades ago, the Local Government Code of 1991 was envisioned to address these gaps by giving vast powers and autonomy to local government units or LGUs to be the frontline service providers in pursuing national development, growth, and poverty reduction. Currently, however, most LGUs are still faced with little resources to finance development projects. The idea of an inter-LGU cooperation to improve infrastructure is also not yet fully appreciated. As a result, the country only spends 3% of its gross domestic product on infrastructure, compared to the 5% spent by other Asian countries. The World Bank has long been a reliable partner of LGUs. The bank has been supporting cities, municipalities, and provinces for more than 30 years, financing the infrastructure needs of more than 400 LGUs. The partnership has brought immense benefit to local planning and infrastructure support since the 80s. It has helped LGUs implement project-based grants and loans through national government agencies and government financial institutions, and technical assistance in the design and capacity development programs. These projects have not only raised LGU incomes and spurred investments, but also led to improved quality of life for their respective constituents. Open ang World Bank sa tax marking project. And I can do that uh, alone kasi kailangan ng konti pang aming income. When was this? 1990. Ang documentation ay nag-start siya noong 1991 at nag uh, nabigyan kami, na-approve kami ng loan in 1992. Mga 3 million kasama na doon yung property identification. Uh, push yung tax collection enforcement. Doon lang kami nag-rely, land, sa land. Pag mataas ang assessment, tama ang assessment, ito tataas ang income. We cannot move on. We cannot look forward for something good. Pag hindi natin, uh, yung ating resources, pag hindi natin ginamit, paano tayo? Hanggang doon na lang kami, 15 million. Okay lang, it will increase into 2% per year or 10% per year, pero Hanggang kailan yun? Talagang yung bawi, yung... Siyempre, malalaking kumpanya na nandito, no? Uh, with the help ng maliliit dito, ang aming income ngayon sa business, 600, 600 million. Yung sa amin na uh, around 400, kasi may sharing pa yun, uh, tumo, that makes 1 billion, na. Ah. Bali, ito po kasi yung ko na to, yung 2003, na ako na yung loan nila, Kung hindi kasi na-repair ito noon, uh, pagka sa 20% namin kagad, nag, alas umubos sila noon ng 200,000 sa sandbagging lang, tapos nawawala lang yon Hindi katulad ngayon na talagang ito matibay dahil may shit pile ito, konkreto, at saka ang pinakamalaking mungkuhan dito noon, nung hindi naayos ito, yung mga negosyante rito, nasisiraan sila ng loob, at saka pagka may, may bagyo na, Pag medyo lumaki na itong Pampanga River, yung mga bata, 
Halos takot nang pumasok. Napakalaking bagay po nito. Marami pong mga nag-invest dito. Dati walang gasolina dito. Maraming mga hardware. Meron kaming park. Meron kaming convention. Pero ang pinakamakuan dito, yung mga mag-aaral dito, nakakapag-aaral sila na hindi nila inisip na bibigay itong DK. Ano? Hindi lang yun. Yung mga tatlong barangay dito, yung mga, yung mga mamamayan dito sa plaza, masarap silang matulog. Ano? Hindi katulad nun. Pag alam nilang may bagyo, natatakot sila, nasisira yung mga tulog nila, di ba? In Ilocandia, we don't like borrowing money. The Ilocos are known to have more deposits than borrowings. But when you are able to explain to them the reason for these borrowings, then they would accept it. In the first place, when I was elected in 1998, I was an opposition mayor. And therefore, I knew that I could not expect any assistance from government. And so I said I would like to do some networking. I applied for 30 million pesos loan for our drainage projects. And it was approved on condition that I also use the money for mitigating measures like buying a vacuum tanker to clean up the drainage canals and also to buy a dredging machine to clean up our esteros. And I said, oh, I'd like to do that too. I had one lying in clinic which I already built from city funds. And so we said, if we could build five others in several clusters of barangays, then we bring health services to the barangays itself. I borrowed 11 million, and that means that we had to pay 5.5 million in 15 years after a three-year moratorium. And guess what? Immediately, we saw the benefits because we started having zero maternal mortality rate, infant mortality rate went down. Another was I borrowed money for schools. I then borrowed for 10 school buildings, putting up 34 classrooms. And the feature here was one classroom had 20 computers. So I was able to have computers accessible to elementary students. This therefore now made us, in for one year, we were number nine. Out of all the schools in the country, we were no, number nine in the national achievement test. And the other loan that I got was a 167 million loan for the engineered landfill. The people were happy. We were able to bring basic services to their literally doorsteps. Most of our policies when we on land no, to local governments uh, are mirrors of what government requirements are. In other words, they are very similar to what the government procedures and policies are. Except that we are quite um, let's say very keen in getting the LGUs to comply or, or to address some of our viability concerns. When we fund projects, uh, they should stand the test of uh, need. No? This should be, the project should be really um, priorities of uh, a locality. And the priorities should not be defined just not just by the mayor but by all stakeholders. That's one. Two, it should stand the test of viability. So they should be socially and economically viable. When we say socially viable, these are really what's needed by the people as expressed by the people. And economically viable, that you know it's when when you spend something on it, there will be some return. So you don't build a bridge where it's not needed. It should also stand the test of good implementation practice. When we say good implementation practices, uh, we mean that the agencies should be able to make sure that the projects really benefit the people. It, it should have positive outcomes, not negative outcomes. When we say positive outcomes, uh, there's a markedly uh, improved difference in the lives of the people because of the project. These are what we call uh, our uh, safeguards responsibilities, which many people believe are the difficult uh, aspects of doing business with the World Bank. 
But that's our responsibility to make sure that our projects do not adversely impact on the people and on the environment. The World Bank supports the Development Bank of the Philippines in the implementation of the Regional Infrastructure for Growth Project, or the RIGP. The RIGP is a 50 million US dollar loan facility that promotes integrative investments within and across LGUs by increasing access to finance for a wide array of local public infrastructure and services. It also supports post-disaster recovery initiatives to help LGUs rehabilitate public infrastructure damaged by natural calamities and ensure the continuous delivery of basic services. A key strategy of RIGP is the concept of integration within and across LGUs. The RIGP supports the thrust of the government to promote integrated and coordinated development. The focus is on physically and economically integrative infrastructures that will enhance intra- and inter-regional connectivity, leverage existing investments, and contribute to overall regional development. In order to ensure that the project is integrative, projects must be identified by a provincial, municipal, or city development plan as a priority and must be endorsed by the Legislative Council or a regional body. Examples of this type of projects are irrigation systems, public markets, schools, hospitals, and health centers. The RIGP targets third to fourth income class LGUs, where constraints in investing on integrative investments are more acute. The project also provides financing to those in other income classes. The RIGP will run for four years, that is from 2012 to 2016. When uh, I first became mayor, uh, we didn't have the local government code yet. The budget of the city was uh, around 18 million pesos. And, uh, you, you know, if you're a new local official, you have a lot of big plans for the jurisdiction and the locality. So the problem then was uh, where you will uh, source the funds for the projects that you would like to implement. Now we decided to borrow money from, from World Bank for a, uh, a, a bus terminal project. And uh, we felt that the terms for the money coming from World Bank were most advantageous to the local government unit. The project was uh, self-liquidating. In fact, uh, later on, uh, the revenues we realized from the project were much more than uh, the cost of maintaining and operating the economic activity. We realized that it was important to, to front load some of the resources that uh, we needed for, for two reasons. One is that uh, normally the cost of construction is higher than uh, the interest cost and inflation. And if you will advance the money, you'll be able to do more for the same amount of money and at the same time uh, take on the benefits of the project. In fact, I think uh, while we are very prudent, we, we look at borrowings, we look at, of course, grants uh, in order for us to be able to deliver the, the projects and services in a manner uh, that allows us to capitalize on outside resources. It's, it's more of project selection than, uh, than, than the concept of borrowing. It's more of uh, making sure that uh, we do not exceed the, the allowed ceilings as against uh, not borrowing. To make sure that the money will be spent wisely, you know, we're proposing what we call a requirement of seal of good housekeeping, that LGUs with no seal of good housekeeping should not be allowed to borrow. Because uh, uh, there is that risk that the money will not be spent for uh, the purpose that it was borrowed. 
the internal revenue allotment, uh, if it consists 80 to 85 percent of the budget, it's guaranteed payment. And that's the reason why LGUs are prime, prime clientele at this point in time. So in, in, in so far as we are concerned in general, I guess uh, we should promote prudent borrowing and uh, make sure that uh, the projects that are identified for, for these borrowings are really good for the public.